Well, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. Before we get started and start reading some of this, I just want you to be reminded that many times whenever I, this is something that the Lord has showed me. When I teach on the Old Testament, the Lord always reminds me of this, that the nation of Israel as a collective whole is kind of like Christian in modern day society. What I'm saying is, is, is you can almost look at it like this. The father had two sons. One, the older brother was named Israel and the younger brother's named Christian. The Apostle Paul told us that they were examples to us. So we monitor their, the Word of God in the Old Testament. We see the ways that they walked. We see the failures that they had. We see how many times they repented and they came back to the Lord. And that they were sorrowful for their actions. We also see that many times the decisions that they made had negative repercussions in their life. But God was always merciful to them and He yes, always yes, reached yes, out to yes. them with outstretched arms. Oh, yes. And so it is for Christian in the New Testament. Oh, yes. You're Christian. I'm Christian. We've given our heart to the Lord. Both Israel and Christian are the people of God. Therefore, when we read the Old Testament, we don't say in our mind, Oh, this is the Old Testament. This doesn't have anything to do with me. Have you ever been there before? I know I will used to be when I first got saved and didn't really understand. I can remember being offshore, you know, trying to read my Bible like a good believer, trying to learn and getting into all this stuff about the law. And when I didn't know anything, I'm like, oh, well, this doesn't have anything to do with me. Oh, Lord, I was missing it. There was so much information in there that the Lord wanted me to understand. So I'm here to tell you this morning, whenever we're talking about Israel this morning, we're talking about the church. Amen. We're talking about you and I because we're both God's people. Amen. And God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. His word Amen. will never change. Amen. Though the flower fades and the grass withers, the word of the Lord will stand forever. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's go into the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 2. And we're going to start off with verses 1 through 8, and then we'll skip down a little bit. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your espousals. In other words, I remember whenever we were espoused to one another. Espouse, uh, you know, espouse is kind of like you, you can, it's a betrothal. It's kind of like our modern day engagement, but it was a lot more intense and it had a lot more meaning to it. And God said, I remember when you and I were engaged back in the day and we had that close, that close walk. When you went after me in the wilderness and the land that was not sown, you know, there was a time when the Lord delivered Israel out of Egypt. That he was walking in the wilderness with them. And yes, they made many a mistake. But at the same time, they were still hungry for the Lord. They still wanted to live for God. They were anticipating the future that God had for them. He says, Israel was holiness unto the Lord. And the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, says the Lord. I, I, I always like to take a little bit of time to teach. I don't want to overdo this because I want to try to get through my message. But listen, there's a lot of really deep information right here. I want you to know that, first of all, that word first fruits, do you see that? That's actually one of the feasts in Leviticus 23. There were multiple feasts of the Lord. The first four occurred at the first part of the year. And that's when you had Feast of Unleavened Bread, Passover, the Feast of First Fruits. The, Jesus resurrected on the Feast of First Fruits. It's the first Sunday after the Sabbath, after Passover. Jesus fulfilled all these feasts. But what I want you to understand about the Feast of First Fruits is what it meant was there was a big old barley harvest out there. It was the first harvest of the year. And the person that was the former would go out there and he would grab a sheaf, which is a certain amount of this barley, and he would harvest it. And then what he was supposed to do was he's supposed to bring it to the priest. Now, that particular first part was separated out from the rest of the harvest. Does that make sense? It was the first fruit. It was like considered a holy lump because it was separated and it was dedicated specifically to go to the priest. So what God's saying is, you like my first fruit, Israel. Hey, Christian, you, you my first fruit. Your holiness unto the Lord. You were taken out from the rest of the harvest and you were made separate. You, when you got saved, were made separate from the world. You're the holiness of God. Hallelujah. You're the first fruit. God wants you to know that you belong to him. Listen to me. If you're saved in this place this morning, you belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. You gave your heart to Jesus. The Holy Ghost moved in your heart. Now you are 
are the property of the Holy One of Israel. Amen. 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 Thank you for amen to me now because it's going to get better. <laughs> Hold on tight. Buckle your seatbelt because it's about to get better. <laughs> amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said the fruits of his increase. And if someone else would devour the first fruits, it don't belong to just anybody. You can't eat that first fruit. That goes to the priest. Mm. That's holiness unto the Lord. The priest represents God. Yes. And in God's eyes, you're the, you're the first fruit. They may better not nobody come chewing on you, friend. <laughs> you know, better not be nobody backbiting on you. You ain't even got to worry about all that backbiting, all that people gossiping about you behind your back, trying to take you down, talking bad about you. You might have done something wrong. Wrong. You might have went the wrong way, but the God of Israel says you are holiness unto him. And let them try to devour you. Your vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You ain't even got to pray that way. Oh, Lord, let your vengeance come upon him. He put hot coals upon their head. You ain't got to do all that. Pray for those that despitefully use you. And when you feel the bitterness in your heart, Lord, say, do something in me that I might pray from a pure heart for that person because you were merciful to me, a sinner. Hallelujah. The beauty of Jesus came into my heart, opened my eyes so that I could see. Lord, I pray for them. And you don't want nobody to go to hell, friend. Oh, I heard Brother Swagger talking about that Wednesday night when he started talking about hell. And he just does it in a way that nobody else can do it. And I mean, it just was so palpable. Mm -hmm. You don't want nobody to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Jesus. I'm telling you right now, I heard people say, I'm glad they sniped Osama bin Laden. I'm like, man, I don't <laughs> want nobody to go to hell. Jesus. I don't, it, that, 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 an eternal soul tormented in hell. Lord Jesus, help us to get a revelation yes. that hell is real. They don't yes. want to preach about it in the modern church. Hell is real. Yes. Jesus said the fire doesn't, doesn't quench. The worm dies not. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The people will be mourning. Oh, it will be the most horrendous thing that you've ever seen. But hallelujah, you're the holiness of the Amen. Lord. If you're saved this morning, Amen. praise God. Hallelujah. He says, evil shall come upon them, says the Lord, if they try to devour you. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of, it, of, of J Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity or emptiness, and are become vain or empty? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up? And they forgot me. Why they didn't say, where's the Lord that brought us out of the land of Egypt that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. Mm. When he says vanity and vain, you know, he's really talking about false idols. Children of Israel, when they got settled in, we're about to get into it, but they went after false gods. People, the pre, the, you know, the people in the congregation, maybe nowadays in the New Testament church, yeah, well, that ain't me. I'm changing the page. I ain't got no statue of Mary in my yard. That ain't what we're talking about. Right, right. We're not talking about no statue of Mary, man. An idol is anything that is in your life that stands between you and God and prevents you from looking to the Lord. And it could be another human being. It could be a drug. It could be an alcohol. It could be an addiction. It could be pride. It could be anything that stands between you and the holiness of God. And he's saying, come to me so that I can reveal my beauty to you so that your heart would adore me. Anything that stands in the way between you and the holiness yeah, of God. Yes, yes. I'm trying this morning not to get specific. I'm trying this morning not to start picking on everybody's little favorite thing because the Lord knows the pastor got his own little favorite things that he needs to surrender to. And just because I start picking on something and take a chance and hit y'all's don't mean that the Lord ain't dealing with me about right, mine. Right. Amen. 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 Oh, Lord, help us. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's just go on. <laughs> he, said in ver he says in verse 7, And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my inheritance an abomination. Mm -hmm. See, I, I saved you. And I brought you to the place I promised you, but whenever you got there, somehow you found some kind of fault with me. Mm -hmm. And you turned around and you went looking at other stuff. Uh -huh. And you allowed other stuff to come back up in your life, and right. boy, it gets even worse as we keep yeah. going. Right. <laughs> says in verse 8, the priest said not, where is the Lord? In other words, it would have been a good thing if they seen all that and they would have said, well, where's the Lord in all this? Right. They didn't say that. And they that handled the law, they act like they knew me not. The pastors, you know what? They transgressed against me too. And look at this. And the prophets 
prophesied by Baal. Oh my gosh. They're, the prophets of God, you got to get to wrap your mind around this. The prophets of God began to prophesy as though they were prophesying for Baal. Now, I don't want to get ahead of my point, but you got to hold on to that for a second because, wait, you would think, Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. The prophets are no longer prophesying according to the word of the Lord. They're now prophesying according to a false god. We're the people of God. Why are we living, listening to the words of a false? What I want you to know is this, is that not only is God the same yesterday and forever, there's also a spirit of Antichrist upon the earth. And the same spirit of Antichrist that used to cause deception in the mouths of God's prophets in Israel is the same spirit of Antichrist that still is alive and a well in the church. And everything that you see on TV that calls itself Christian, and every man that you stand, see stand behind a pulpit that says he's preaching the word of the Lord is not necessarily preaching the word of the Lord. They may be taking elements of scripture and presenting them to you, but the overall context of the, of the message that they're communicating to you is contrary to the overall message of God. Which is a message that describes separation, a message that describes holiness, a message that doesn't tell you that you just get whatever it is that you want right here, right now, today. No, because if that was the case, there would be no inheritance for tomorrow. Hello. But we, are, we live in the midst of a society where on one end we're like, oh man, all things go. God's merciful and he's gracious. Yes, he's merciful and gracious, but he's not okay with us doing just any old thing. His Hello. word says that we're to be separated. We live in the midst of a society where the preacher says, man, you got to get what you got coming to you right now. You're the child of God. You're blessed. Go get your blessing, boy. I don't know about you, but I watched this movie a long time ago called Far and Away. Y'all ever saw that movie? That was when Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman were married. I'm not trying to promote a movie. I'm just saying. It was interesting because it was whenever the Irish people were immigrating to the U.S. and they all ended up in the big cities, you know. And uh, Tom Cruise was like a, a scrapper, you know? I don't even know why I'm telling you this story. Because it's been in my head lately. Because of the different things I've been kind of like communicating with people. And anyway, boy, he's an up-and-comer, dude. He's got some hard knocks. He's going through things. But he's like, oh, no, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to fight. I'm going to win. And at the end, America was allowing these people in the West, listen, if you can stake a claim, baby, that land is yours. And he was with, he met back up with the older, the, the in-laws of the people, that, the, the girl he fell in love with. And they were kind of old and they couldn't really move forward. But everybody was on the run. Everybody was on the horses looking to stake their claim. And the old man kind of fell off the horse and he said, go get it. Go get your land, boy. You know? And so that's what I'm trying to say, though. And he was going to get his land. But in, in American gospel, we think that we could just go get whatever we, we got coming to us. We think that you know this whole life and this whole Christianity is all about blessings and financial blessings material blessings God does want to bless you he will bless you but if your blessing stands in the way of God and becomes an idol in your life that's a problem Christian anything that gets in the way can become a problem amen he goes on to say this in Jeremiah chapter 12, 2, verse 12. He says, Be astonished, O you heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, says the Lord. This is a sad thing that God's people would turn from him. Look, this is one of my one of my favorite scriptures, man, when the Lord first got a hold of me. It spoke so clearly to me. Look at this. For my people have committed two evils. Number one, they forsook me. Now, you got to understand something. I'm about to get into this in a second. When I do, at the end, it's going to go pretty quick. But I'm kind of setting it up. You need to understand something. These people didn't even know they weren't serving the Lord no more. Mm. That's really the essence of what I'm trying to talk to you about this morning. It can get so bad out there that we think we're okay when in reality we're not okay. Yeah. Right. Right. My people have done two things. They've committed two evils. Number one, they forsook me. They, they, they forsook me. The fountain of living waters. Yeah, yeah. I remember one time I was in a boat with my, my mama's older brother. She sent me away to be with him for the summer. <laughs> and we were in this boat, and he's like, we're going to this place called Magnolia Springs. And I jumped in that water, dude. It was cold, and I could feel this water coming up from underneath me. I'm like, man, what's that? Why is this water so cold? He said, that's a spring. The water's coming up from the earth. I said, man, this is cool. The Lord's trying to say he is a fountain of living water. God's grace, God's mercy, God's power, whatever it is that
that you need. He is a constant source that never runs out. But he says, my people committed two evils. Number one, they left me. I was an unending source. I was always there. I was going to provide for them. And what is what they did? They changed me out for a cistern. Not just any old kind of cistern, but a broken cistern. Broken cistern can't hold no water. We leave the Lord who is the source of all and we turn our hope and our focus on something else that's going to leave us empty Amen. and dry. You're going to wake up one morning and that cistern is going to be empty. And everything that you were searching for is going to leave you empty if it wasn't Jesus. But I'm here to tell you that no matter what you're going through, no matter the pain, no matter the season, keep your eyes on Jesus. Because look, we all go through things, but we've got to hold on Amen. to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's look at verse 19. We're going down to verse 19. And then he goes on to say this. He says, your own wickedness will correct you. Your own backslidings will reprove you or bring correction to you. Now know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that you have forsaken the Lord your God and that my fear is not in you, says the Lord God of hosts. For of all time... And actually, this translation would be better to be said, for you broke the yoke and you burst the bands. Mm -hmm. You know what a yoke is? Y'all remember that? I teach this all the time, right? Because, you know what? I used to think this is so crazy. I probably told y'all this a lot. My, uh, my wife had a, a cassette tape of an old Christian singer, and, and his name was Ray Bolts. And he was singing this song, come and break the yoke, Lord. Come and set this child free. I can't say. <laughs> Come and break the. And I was thinking in my head because I was just newly saved and I didn't like Christian music that much because my flesh was still in the way. I was like, we're talking about breaking the yolk, man. We were going to fry an egg for Why are we sitting there frying an egg? Because I didn't know what a yolk was. It wasn't Y O L K, it was Y O K E. I'm like, why are you singing about frying an egg? She's like, no, man. That's not about an egg. A yolk. It was two pieces of wood, and you connected two animals together that would, they were beasts of burden so that you could plow the field. A yoke connects one thing to another thing. Right. The Lord's saying, when you're in relationship with me, it's like you yoke together with yeah. me. Right. But Israel broke the yoke. Mm. Broke the yoke and got off. You know, now what he was singing about, two different things, he was singing about a yoke of sin on his life. And he was saying, come and break the yoke that's connecting me to sin. But what the Lord's saying is, you broke the yoke that connected me to you. So that you could go off in your own direction and right, you could right. go off and do your things. You cut the bands that tied us together because you thought that you had something else. I brought you into this land that flows with milk and honey. And when you get over there and all these blessings coming up in your life, you think you're going to break the yoke and go your own direction. He goes on to say this. No, I didn't write it. The Lord wrote it. He says, not only did you break the yoke and you burst the bands that connected me to you, you also said this, I will not transgress. I'm not going to cheat on the Lord. Okay? But look at what he says. You said, I will not transgress. But, but why you said that, on every high hill and under every green tree, you wander Playing the heart. Mm. Yet I had planted you a noble vine, a holy right seed. How then are you turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine wow. unto me? It, God's saying it's not my fault. I want you to know that this morning, Chris. I know it's kind of like a little bit of a hard message, but it ain't pointed at nobody. It's pointed at all of us. It's a message for the true Christian. Amen. And I'm here to tell you that God's not the one that's at fault. Whenever we find ourselves in a place of our life that looks like it's, it shouldn't be, it's not God's fault. There's no iniquity in God. He planted us as a pure vine. How did you turn into a degenerate vine, Matt, if you've turned into a degenerate vine? Because you went your own way. You broke the yoke. You cut the bands. You went your own way and you traveled towards a cistern that was broken and could not stay full for you and it could not quench your thirst. But because, because you left me, the spring of living water, and you were looking for something else. And you said, I won't transgress. See, the green trees up on the mountaintops is where they would go to worship the false gods. 
And he said, but you say you're not going to transgress, but the reality of it is, is that you're going up on the hilltop under the green trees and you're playing the harlot with those other idols up there. And it's the same thing with the children of God in the church. We say that we're not transgression. We say that we're not we're going in, we're not going in an opposite direction with the Lord, but yet at the same time we're over here with the world. Hey, I'm courting the world, baby. This is my suitor. He comes a calling, so I go with him. No, that's not okay. Lord, help us. I need help. Amen. Jeremiah two thirty five. Withhold, I'm sorry, let's see here. Jeremiah 2.35. I'm just trying to get this called up for the people on it. That are watching on YouTube. Yet you say, because I am innocent, surely his anger, anger shall turn from me. Behold, this is how the King James says it. Behold, I will plead with. But whenever you look at other translations, it says, behold, I will judge you. It's almost like the pleading in a court is what the idea is. Because you say, I have not sinned. No, you, you, you say you're innocent. You say because you're innocent, surely his anger will turn from you. But what I'm saying is, is that no, you're, you're not innocent, at least when you're in this state. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know where you are today. You don't necessarily know exactly where I am. But what I'm saying is, is that when we're in this state of rebellion, where we've left the springs of living water, we've gone to a broken cistern, we've broken the yoke that, the, that connected us to the Lord, and we cut the bands off of us. And in our mind, we're sitting here thinking that we're okay, when in reality, we're not okay. The Lord's saying, because you say you have not sinned, that's a problem, Christian. You see, it's one thing whenever you have things in your life that you're dealing with. Come on, somebody. Give me a what's up. Amen. It's one thing whenever you and I have things in our life that we're dealing with, failures in our life that we're aware of, and we're going to the Lord, and we're like, Lord, this thing is in my life, and right now it's more powerful than me, and I need you to deliver me from it. That's one thing. You see what I'm saying? You're being real with God. Amen? You're being real with God, and he sees that. But it's whenever we're like, nope, I ain't done nothing wrong. I hadn't done nothing wrong. Everything that I'm doing is okay. No, it's not. It's against the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That was actually the title of my message this morning. I never even told you. The title of my message this morning was, He's Woke, But He Can't See. He's Woke, But He Can't See. That's a new phrase. Now, I don't even really know exactly what it means. Oh, he woke. She woke. I don't know exactly what they woke to. Probably all of these various movements that are going on in the country today. A lot of, I think that the word terminology, and I'm not being disrespectful about anything like that. I'm not getting into that. I'm just trying to say, you could be woke to all kind of societal things and still be asleep in the Lord. And if you ain't woke to the Lord, and if you ain't woke, woke to the word of God, hallelujah, the beauty that made my heart be able to see you, if the light of Jesus hadn't come in, you ain't woke to nothing, brothers and sisters. I'm here to tell you right now, because if you get woke to the Holy Ghost, if you get woke to the love of Jesus, you will be awakened to be able to see what the love of God looks like. And you will understand that it's not okay for people to behave the way that they've been behaving in any way, shape, or form. God ain't in none of that. God ain't in none of this civil unrest or the things that took place beforehand or any of that stuff. God, listen, God is, is frowns down on the evil heart of mankind. All men were created equal in the eyes of God. Jesus died for every human being that's ever walked the face of the earth. God is love, hallelujah, and you are his prized creation and he loves you and he sent his son Jesus to die for you and you need to understand that. Amen. I need to understand that. So if we ain't woke to the Lord, we ain't woke at all. Amen. But at the same time, that's not even really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about he's woke. Who's he? The old man. See, unlike whenever you go to sleep and you wake up and you can see when the old man gets woke, you can't see. Because it's the opposite. Right. When the old man comes back to life, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And as a matter of fact, I want to just give you a little bit of an understanding of something. Some, some kind of like, I say basic Christian principles that we teach in this church. And it comes straight out the scripture. 
All right, let me just show you one scripture so that you can see where I'm going with this. Second Corinthians 5.17. I want you to see this scripture and I'm going to try to explain some things just to kind of set the context before we go and, and, and land the plane. All right, you ready? Second Corinthians 5.17. Look what it says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. Are you in Christ this morning? I'm about to break that down. Okay. I hope you're in Christ this morning. If you're not in Christ this morning, you can get in Christ just like that. How do you get in Christ? You have to come to the realization that you were born a sinner. But that God had a plan for sin and his name was Jesus. And that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty. If you don't like this, you don't like the Bible. Hello. That God had a plan for sin and it, his plan was sending Jesus. And that sin was so ugly, so offensive to God, that he had to send his only begotten son, born of a virgin, allow him to grow up, who never failed God, who never disobeyed the Father. And he was stripped naked and beaten with whips. And a crown of thorns was thrust upon his head and he hung naked on a cross in the middle of the noonday sun. All for you. All for me. All so that, his, so that my guilt and the penalty of my sin could be paid for because he was the sinless one and I was the sinful one. And exchange took place on Calvary. He took my sin upon him and he gave me his righteousness. Oh, what a beautiful deal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I was a sinner and I transgressed you, but you loved me. Oh, it's a message of love, church. It's a message of love. Oh, but it makes me feel funny, preacher. It makes me feel frustrated to hear you talk about sin. I, that's the devil. That's the devil. If, you feel, if you're on YouTube and you feel funny right now and you feel frustrated, you want to say, that's the, that's the devil. He's lying to you. That's why the modern church don't preach about sin. Oh, it's going to make people feel funny and they're not going to come back next week. No, you need to hear the truth. We're all in the same boat. We're all born of Adam. Look at this. Go back to 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 17. Because I want you to see it. If you be in Christ. So, if you're not in Christ right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart and forgive me of my sin. Right now, Lord, I give my heart to you. Amen? Get saved. You don't need the preacher to get you saved. Jesus already saved you. You just got to accept it. It's waiting for you in the bank account. Go get your deposit. Go get your land, boy. It's waiting for you right now. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if you be saved, he is a new creature. See, the first time you were born, you were born in your physical birth from your mother, but you were born like your father, Adam. Right? See, Adam was created without sin, but then Adam sinned. And so therefore, every human being that was born of Adam was born in sin. So for lack of better words, let me just kind of say it scientifically. You and I have some kind of genetic disorder called sin in our DNA. I'm using that loosely. You get me? Spiritually, we got some messed up spiritual DNA that we receive from my father, Adam. The psychologist is lying to you when he tells you you were born an alcoholic because your daddy was an alcoholic. He's a liar! No, you were born a sinner because your daddy was a sinner. You just have a different proclivity to go towards, oh, he was born a homosexual. No, he wasn't. You're a liar. He got a certain proclaimed a spirit that's on him. Oh, he was born in a sex addict. No, he's a liar. It's called a spirit of lust. It's all the same. Well, preacher, they're going to shut you down. They might. They're going to put you in jail. One day they might. But it ain't changed the word of the Lord. God said it's wrong. It's wrong. I'm trying to talk to me about all your scientific understanding. The word of God says in the book of Romans that with their own wisdom, they made themselves to be foolish. They thought they were going to outthink God. You can't outthink God, man. He created this earth. No, God doesn't have to back up science. Science needs to get to where God is. Even the scientists that don't believe in God are admitting that there's an intelligent design. Listen to me, I don't have time to get into it. But if you just think about the Krebs cycle, and I can't really remember the whole thing, but I remember having to memorize that thing in nursing school, phosphorylation of carbon atoms, and all that's going on in a little cell in your body. All of your cells are producing energy, this thing called ATP. And it's like a little mechanical engine. And it's going on and it's going on. And glucose and oxygen going in and carbon dioxide and water getting spit out. And you're like a little car driving out. All these cells are producing all this energy. Come on, man. Give me a break, dude. Really? Yes, God did that. God's a creator. Hallelujah. All right. You're a new creature when you get born again. See, the first time you were born like Adam. Right. 
But Jesus said, you must be born again. Yes. Well, how do I get born again? Just like I told you, you got to realize you're a sinner. You got to believe in your heart that Jesus is the answer. And you got to confess it with your mouth. And when you do that, when you mean business with God, I'm not talking about just showed up at a vacation Bible school one time and said, oh, yeah, I want to pray that because everybody else is praying. I'm talking about you got along with the Lord and the Lord convicted your heart and you believed in your heart. I am a sinner, but I believe you died for my sin. When you pray that prayer from a, from a true heart, guess what happens? You become a new creature. You know why? I'm, I'm telling you a lot of theology this morning, but you know what happens when you get saved? The Holy Spirit comes to live in your heart. I thought the Holy Spirit was already with me. The Holy Spirit, you, every single human being on this earth is a, cre is a is a part of God's creation, but not every last person is a child of God. Right. Yes. Hello. No, the, the word of God says in the book of John that, he, that the light came from, came from heaven to, in the midst of darkness and that he gave us the power that those, to, that those who would believe he gave the power to become the sons of God. So we're not all the children of God. You got to believe in the one whom he sent in order to be a child. Well, that's contrary to the message that the world preaches. Everybody should have, there's multiple pathways to God. No, there's not. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the door to the sheep. He is the access point. If you ain't going through Jesus, you're trying to give you that like a thief in a robber. There's only one way to get there, and it's through Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. That's right. So you're a new creature if you're saved. And look at this. All things are passed away. All that old stuff? Come on, somebody. Help me out. Help me out. Now, don't let me get to get real specific with you. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now, I got to tell you that this is a process. Yes, it is. Right? I'm, don't ever let the... Don't ever let the don't ever leave here feeling like the preacher's just beating you up. Oh, he thinks he's all holy. No, 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 no. This is, Christianity is a process. Yes, it's an immediate yes, event when you give your heart to Jesus. Yes, but it's also a process, a daily walk when you move towards the Lord, yes. that he's cleaning you up. He's changing your mindset. Yes. He's causing your heart yes. to believe like he believes according yes. to his word. Amen. Yes. Does that make sense Amen. what I'm saying? Yes. Listen to me. Don't get frustrated. And just, just know that when you come in here, we're going to try to give you the truth. All right. And just be happy about it. Oh, my heart loves the truth. The psalmist said you desire truth on the inward parts. Yes. That's what we want to do. We want to give the truth. Amen. 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 Yes. Praise God. Keep that scripture up there for me. Yes. So look at this. Old things are passed away. So what does that mean, preacher? Well, I can, tell, can, I, can I go ahead and name something? It means I don't go where I used to go. Hello. What does that mean? Well, I don't know. You figure that bad boy out. <laughs> for Matt, it used to be I used to go hang out in this rock and roll bar named Shanahan's back in Lafayette. <laughs> well, we're going to Shanahan's now. We're going to go over to the king. And I don't know really how to dance too good, so I ain't going in Mako's, but I'm going down there to this other place, and they got some 50 cent beer. Okay, that's the places that I used to go. And the old things are passed away. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You know? I mean, I always use the same particular, uh, oh yeah, you know, I used to listen to, you know, certain kinds of music, uh, you know, Van Halen, I remember I saw them in concert, running with the devil, you know, I was all proud of that, yeah, ACDC, and my friends are going to be there too, we're on a highway to, oh Lord help, they're over here singing it at the top of my lungs, yeah, we're going to hell, and my friends are going to be there, we're going to have a party. It's going to be miserable, dude. Your flesh is going to be roasting. Worm dies not. The fire isn't quenched. Old things have passed away. When you get saved and the Holy Ghost comes to live in your heart, he's trying to tell you, that ain't me. That's the world's message speaking to you, trying to hold on to you, trying to put his claws in you. I made you a noble vine. I brought you to the land I had for you. How you forgot me? How you forgot me? You, you turn towards vanity. Here's another scripture, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. I'm talking about the old man. When the old man woke, but he can't see. See, because when the old man wakes, guess what? You think you're okay. I said, I will not transgress yet under every green tree on every hill. You committing, you playing harlotry tree with me. Lord, help us. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. This is what we're supposed to do once we get saved. 
concerning the former conversation or the former way of life, you could say that. The old man, that was that guy I was telling you about that was born in Adam. He's corrupt. He was born corrupt. But you're supposed to put him off when you renewed in the spirit of your mind. How are you get a renewed mind? Well, it's not just by reading the Bible, but that is a big part of it. It's by understanding the Bible. Because right. the Bible is the word of God. Amen. And, the Bi and, and, and it's, what's okay is not what other people are saying is okay. Right. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. What's okay is not what the pastor down the road says are okay, or even what Pastor Matt says is okay. Amen. Unless Pastor Matt's saying what the word of God says is okay. This is the word of the Lord. Yes. This is his communication to his people. Yes. This is what's okay and what's not okay. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. And so the only way we're going to know what's okay with the Lord is by getting into the word and availing ourselves to the preaching of a true gospel. Yes. But yet if we misunderstand what the word of God says, or we have a preacher that preaches the word of God in error and tells us, oh, don't worry about that. Oh, you all good. I don't heard preachers. I don't heard a girl go to a preacher back in the church I used to be to and said, hey, listen, I got this, this and this. And it was some serious. Stuff. Oh, no, you're good. You're going to be fine, baby. Wait, hold on a second. Say what? No, she's coming to you to bear her heart. She's not going to be okay. The Holy Spirit's convicting her of things that are in her life. You need to minister to her and you need to let her know that it's sin, but that God is good and he will heal her Amen. if she will trust in him. Amen. It's not that it's going to be okay, baby. That's right. That's right. Lord, help us. So the old man, according to his old way of life, but when you get renewed in the spirit of your mind, when the Holy Spirit, along with the Word of God, begins to renew your mindset, begin. You know, it's, I don't have any glasses. I wish I had some glasses because I'll put them on. Because what are the what are the glasses that you look through when you view the world? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If you view the world that you live in through the eyes of the truth of the gospel, you will see it so much different. I was having a conversation with one of my other friends the other day. He's like, "Man, the more I talk to people that are out there." And he said, I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about Christians. Mm -hmm. They are so confused. He's like, dude, I'm scared. Wow. He didn't say scared, but he's like, I don't want to date nobody. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have no relationship with nobody right now because there ain't nobody. They, like, they, they, so, they don't understand. And he, this person is not a holier than thou kind of person. He's just very down to earth. But he's like, dude, the more I talk to people, I'm like, I'm scared. Like, if I yoke myself with that, where am I end up? Amen. What you need to do is you need to hold on to Jesus. Amen. And if you hold on to Jesus and let him none, give you revelation and understanding, if at some point in time, forget about the, uh, the, per, the looking for somebody. Come on. Oh, preacher, you're, you're crazy. I need somebody. No, listen to me. The psychologist calls that codependent. That could just be another addiction. I didn't even, that's not even in my notes, but I'm just here to be real with you this morning. <laughs> if you don't got yourself in a situation that be, that you feel like you got to have somebody to live with at all times. Listen, if you married, I ain't talking to you. If you're in a covenant relationship with God, stay, stand by your man like Tammy, I think her name, why that's it. <laughs> or stand by your husband, stand, stand by your wife, okay, either way. But what I'm trying to say is, is that if you ain't married and all of a sudden you feel like you got an emptiness because your boyfriend left you, your girlfriend left you, whatever the case, and now you got this big empty spot and you think by going find somebody else that's going to fix the problem. No, brother. No, sister. That's just going to get in the way. That is an empty cistern that is broken and will not hold water. That is not a spring of living water that will bring you life. That's right. Don't listen to the preacher, though, because you know the preacher had to learn it the hard way. Various things that we look for, that we look into, that we think are going to bring us happiness, and they just end up leaving us empty. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man, hallelujah, which after God is created in all righteousness. So after we become a new creation, we're supposed to stop acting like the old man and start acting like the new man. Amen? People that live in disobedience to God are blinded to the truth. And this is not just unbelievers. Listen, there's a danger. That's really what my message is about this morning. I'm really preaching or speaking to believers this morning. There's a danger when unbelievers, I'm sorry, when believers ignore the truth also. Amen. There's a danger that can happen, you know. Whenever you're exposed to the truth, one of two things can happen. And most of us in this room know that this is true. 
We can either submit to the truth or we can ignore the truth. There's a danger that happens when we begin to ignore the truth. So when you got saved, that old man who was a slave to sin before died, a new man resurrected, and the power of sin over our lives is broken by faith in Jesus. Romans 6 describes it as though the relationship dies. It's not that the sin nature that we receive from Adam is gone or eradicated from us. That won't happen until we get to glory. But it's like the relationship, for lack of better words, is divorced. Or it's almost like the old man of sin, he went dodo. He, he's taking a nap. I mean, I guess you could say it that way. He's sleeping. He's supposed to be dormant. If I could say it like that. He's not supposed to be active and in control. He's not supposed to be the one that's telling us where to go and what to do. It's supposed to be the Holy Spirit that's the one that's telling us where to go and what to do. Amen. Right? But the problem is, is that when we begin to open the door, when we begin to open the door and he starts to wake up, he gets woke. Mm -hmm. And the more he gets woke, the less we're able to see. Yeah. So some of you are new Christians in here, and I think that this is a good word for you. Listen. To some extent, as you journey Christianity, you're going to make decisions that are not right. And God won't waste anything. I'm not telling you that it's okay to go sin. That would be a foolish thing to say because it causes heartache and pain. But at the same time, God gave you a free will. Listen to me. Sometimes people call me up and they're like, okay, hey, hey, Matt. Hey, Pastor Matt. I, I need you to give me a scripture that tells me. That this is wrong. I'm like, hold on, brother. Hold on, sister. Time out. I'm here to teach you how to get a hold of Jesus. Yes. Yes. If I can tell you how to go to hold of Jesus and, and teach you how to keep your faith in Christ and what he did, guess what? He becomes the pastor of your soul. Oh, wow. Guess what? His Holy Spirit starts to speak to you. Yes. Now, it's your responsibility, just like it's my responsibility, to listen. How many times have you heard the still, small voice of the Lord? Does the, does the preacher need to say, this is wrong, that is wrong? Oh, I can break it down for you. If you ever want to come to me and ask me a question, we'll look at it together. We might not completely agree. We might agree. I don't know. <laughs> but I can tell you one thing. If the Holy Spirit reveals to you or if you start to feel sick on the inside of yourself right, and you it. feel uneasiness and yeah. you feel a lack of peace and you feel turmoil in your heart over something that doesn't even seem to be that big. Right. Come on, help me out, bro. Sister, like, I mean, have you ever been in a situation where you're just like walking in public and somebody is like, hey, Matt, I need you to do, like, yeah, okay, I'll get to it. You know, what's the big deal there? What's, why, when I turned the corner, did my heart feel so burdened? Why, when I turned the corner, did, did I feel so, like I had done such a wrong? All I did was say, yeah, I'll get to it. Why was that such a big deal? Right, right. Because the Holy Spirit was dealing with me. He will hold you more accountable than the preacher ever could. He will hold you more accountable than the law ever could. When you got a personal relationship with Jesus, He will speak to you. He will lead and guide you like a shepherd to good water. He's so good. But the more we hear the Word of God and we don't listen, look at Matthew chapter 13, 15. <clears throat> says this people's heart is waxed gross. The idea, if you look it up in the actual original language, it's like a, you cooked bacon in a pan and you left the grease and you left it overnight and it got wet, hard and congealed. That's what happens. Whenever the, pre, the message goes forward and, and we hear the gospel and we refuse to submit to it, it's like a covering of fat comes over our heart. It becomes hard and there's like a layer that comes over it. Okay, and and that, and what happens is is that their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have been closed. And if they would have opened their eyes and they would have heard, then he would have healed them. But that, that this goes all the way back to the prophet Isaiah, when God called Isaiah and he said, "Whom will I send?" And Isaiah said, "Send me, Lord." And the Lord said, "Good. Then this is what I want you to do. I want you to go and I want you to tell them the truth. But hearing they will not hear, seeing they will not see." And he said, their heart will become hard. But if their heart wouldn't have become hard, I would have healed them. And you know what God's saying? He's saying, listen, my word's going to go forth. Some are going to respond by faith. And they're going to give their heart to me. But yet many still will reject my word. And when they...
they do, they harden their own heart to their own detriment is what the Lord is saying. I'm going to I'm going to speed things up because I had four points and I'm not going to go through them all. But listen, point number one was this. What happened to the first love? Amen. You remember in that first passage, the Lord said in verses one through three, he said, he said, the Lord came to the prophet Jeremiah. He said, go cry in the ears of Jerusalem. He said, I remember you in your youth whenever you used to walk with me and how you ran after me. I remember all of that. I remember you were the first fruits of my increase in the land that had not been sown yet. And, and he said, where, where are you now? I saved you from your sin is what the Lord would say. I delivered you from bondage and I made you my own. I went to war for you. I said that people that would eat of the first fruit, I was going to devour them. If they came against the holiness of God, if they came against that which belonged to me, I got your back. I was there to protect you and to take care of you. What happened to the first love? Point number two. Now you only see the goods and not the God. He, he went on to say that where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? You don't see him anymore through a land of deserts and pits. God does a, God does a wonderful thing in our life. I, I've seen it both ways. I've seen some people when they, when they fall, whenever bad things start happening to them. You know bad things still happen to Christians, especially in the midst of today's society. You can wake up Monday and go to work and they say, man, we don't really need you anymore. Right. And that's possible. We don't really need you anymore. And it's like, I've seen it both ways. And Lord, please help me. Yeah. I don't want to hear those words if I go to work <laughs> on Monday. But what I'm saying is, is that sometimes whenever those kinds of things happen to some people, man, next thing you know, they're running in the opposite direction. And at the same time, sometimes people get overly blessed. Mm -hmm. And when they're getting blessed, they, they're looking at the goods and not the God. And they forget and they think in their mind because they're blessed, yeah. God's favor is working in their lives. Listen to me. The devil brought Jesus up on the mount. Yeah. Amen. And he said, if you will bow your knee to me, I will give you all these kingdoms. Just because you got blessed, just because you got money in your bank account, doesn't mean that all that blessing comes from the Lord. Amen. Matter of fact, you and I can get blessed materially. And the next thing you know, we so, so full of greed, so full of envy. All we got our mind on is the goods and we no longer got our mind on the God. Lord, help us. Amen. Point number three, he said, you're serving me. He said, you're not serving me anymore and you can't see it. He said, I brought you to a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof. And the priest said, not where is the Lord? And the prophets prophesied by Baal. You remember when I told you that earlier? Listen, I've done a lot of research on this. Back when I got my master's in theology, I read this big old book. And you know what was amazing? What these scholars kept saying, there was a time frame in Israel's history, and this is part of that time frame, that they were literally worshiping false gods and they didn't even know it. They had false gods in the temple and they were so deceived by sin that they just thought that they were still, it's okay for us to do both. Wow. We'll worship Jehovah, we'll worship Baal, it's all good. Baal gives us rain, Jehovah gives us seed, you know, whatever. No, that's not okay, child of God. God wants you and I to be the holiness, to be separated out from the rest of the world. He's called us to be different so that people can see us. But listen, you know what the good news is? He's not asking you to do it in your own strength. He's here to help you every step of the way. Amen. His Holy Spirit wants to give you the grace and the strength that you need. Amen. But that's what happens. The main point I'm trying to make is, is that many times whenever that old man is waking up, he can't see that he's that the old man's awoke. He can't see that he's bound in sin because sin has so deceived him and he's so frustrated in his sin and he'll swear. And you know what? You know what else will happen to us? I'm telling you, I learned this the hard way too. I start looking at everybody else. I start looking at everybody else. Yeah, but I ain't like that. I don't do that. That's, I don't have time to get into that, but that's called relative righteousness. You, because you supposedly don't do what somebody else does. Oh, I don't smoke. I don't dip. <clears throat> what was that old song? I don't smoke, I don't dip, I don't chew, and I don't go with girls that do. You can think that you don't do all that kind of stuff. And the reality of it is, is listen to me. You got something. I ain't, my, old preacher used to, my old preacher used to say, you got a booger in your biscuit, didn't that great? Why did he say that? Why did I just say that? <laughs> That is so gross. I guess it accomplished the purpose. 
<laughs> we all got some, and we over there looking at everybody else. Mm -hmm. I knew they were what they said they were. Look at that. Fall flat on that. Look how they act. They're not acting like Jesus. Well, hold on a second now. Slow down. Slow down. Don't let the Lord expose all your business. You know? Be, be kind. Be merciful. Be humble. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, if we remain outside of God's will, our own actions will ultimately result in our own discipline. That's what he said right there. He said, your own wickedness will correct you and your backslidings will reprove you. God's word is always merciful. He's always bidding us to come to him. This, this, I'm telling you right now, this message is definitely just as much for the preachers as it is for the people. I'm telling you. And the Lord will say that. He'll say, listen to me. Your own actions. Can I just say it like that? Because I don't keep saying wickedness because then you're going to think I'm calling you wicked. And that's not the point. Your own backslidings will bring correction. Because if you continue on, if we continue on in the way that we're going and we're not listening to the word of the Lord, then what ends up happening is, is that we become overcome by it. And then the next thing you know, we can't see it anymore. You know, I don't know about you, but I always thought... Night, could you come to the keyboard and whoever else wants to come and just get ready to prepare us a song? But I used to think about that backsliding concept. You, ever, you heard of that? People talked about that before. Oh, they're a Christian, but they're a backsliding Christian. You know, you heard of the word backsliding. So one time I preached a message on that. I remember. I don't know how long we've been having a church, about six years, so I didn't preach a whole lot of messages. But I remember I did a study on that. Because there's another spot in the Old Testament where God says Israel is like a backsliding heifer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, I got that picture. I did a little research on it. And you know what it is? It's kind of like, again, Israel was a very much a hill type country, a lot of hills. And many times they would even have to plow, you know, up on a hill. And could you imagine like when the, when the soil is wet and you're trying to plow with the heifer, a female, a female, you know, animal, beast of burden, and she loses her footing. Right? And she's trying real hard. Like I can imagine her. She's even got her hoofs turned sideways. I know I look goofy, but I'm just trying to make a point. She got her feet turned sideways and she's trying to come back up against it, but the earth is just like crumbling underneath her. It's all slippery and she's she's Israel's like a backsliding heifer. And a lot of times that's what happens in our life whenever we open up the door to these things. And our old man gets woke. And we can't even really see it. And we're trying. There's a part to us that maybe wants to gain ground and, and wants to get back up. And we're like, Lord, I need help. But, I, but I'm sliding. I'm going backwards. My prayer for you this morning, my prayer for myself this morning, is that we would be able to see whenever we are sliding back. Yes. That we would be able to see ourselves properly. That we wouldn't think more highly of ourselves than what we ought, but that we would know really the spiritual condition of our own hearts. Let's pray this morning. And look, if you need additional prayer, I want you to know the altars are always open. Amen. But let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you in prayer this morning and I thank you for your word. I know that you are a merciful and a good God. Maybe there's somebody here this morning, Lord, that doesn't know you. I just pray right now that they would receive you into their hearts, Lord. That they would say, yes, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sin, have your way with me, teach me your ways. Lord, I pray for the congregation, all of the people that showed up to worship you this morning, Lord. I know that it was a good word because it's your word, Lord. It reminds us how good you are and how much you love us. And it reminds us, Lord, that we do, we have hearts that many times turn in a wrong direction. But you are a God of mercy. You teach us your ways through your word. Yes. I never really got to it, but you know the word of the God, the, the psalmist said in Psalm 119, 18, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law or out of your word. Lord, I pray that you would open all of our eyes this morning, Lord, that we would be able to see your word, see your heart. Holy Spirit, have your way in our lives. Help us to submit our will to your will. 
Let's worship the Lord together. And if you need prayer, y'all.